Okay, dude. For, this is like the 10th time I've tried to do this fucking video because OBS sucks. All right, anyways, how to use outboard gear in Universal Audio's Luna software. Now, I'm not a big tutorial guy. I've done them in the past, but I just feel like I'm adding to the redundancy of all the online information. If I do something, it's because there's not enough information out there or um, it just needs a little more clarification, I suppose. But look, Luna is amazing. It's one of my favorite softwares to uh, work in. The console emulation, the summing, the hardware emulation, like it just sounds really, really good. And I, I, I just love sending stems into it for mixing and mastering. Like I'm getting my Pro Tools cert just to join the crowd. Uh, but I will still use Luna on the back end of the process. So, however, <laughs> because it's so new, there's still some, uh, some things Universal Audio needs to work out, and that's utilizing outboard gear. Um, it is a headache to do. So let's get into it. <clears throat> um, stop talking and rambling. Now, the headache is because you have to send every single piece of gear to its own track. Yeah, it takes a lot of setting up at first, but once you do it, you have a template, save it, use it every time, you're good to go. So I'm just gonna run you guys through how I do it. There could be another way, but this is what I've found to work for me, okay? <clears throat> all right, first things first, this all depends on the configuration of your studio as far as IO goes, inputs and outputs. For me, I have every piece of hardware is hard routed to the back of my Apollo via DB25 snake cables, right? Um, for this video, I'm gonna use the SSL Fusion and the West Audio Bus Comp. And I have my SSL going into channels one and two. It's a stereo unit, same with the Bus Comp. So in console, which you probably can't see on the screen, I'm going to go to where it says analog one and two, channels one and two, right click, link, so that now it's in stereo, do the same for channels three and four for the bus comp. I'm going to make sure that it's at line level and not mic, right? And from there, I'm going to mute the tracks, make sure the output is to monitor, good to go, back into Luna. Okay. Now, as you see, here in like the pinkish purple colors, this is every piece of outboard gear that I have. I've just created a new track. Um, and I guess for the sake of the video, I'll show you how to do that. It's just track, new track. You wanna make sure that it's an audio track, not an instrument or a bus. Um, and depending on what type of unit, these are stereo units. So it's going into stereo. If I were to use the LA two-way or the CL1B, so to speak, I leave it in mono. Um, you know, you can name it whatever you want, right? SSL Fusion, and then we don't want to send it to tape or console because we're trying to send a signal just to a hardware unit. We're not trying to do all that extra shit. Then we hit, okay, like I accidentally made this mono. If you do that, you just got to restart. It sucks. I know there's no way to change that, <clears throat> um, but it doesn't matter. So <clears throat> at least for this video, on the input, let me delete this to make it a little more clear. I already have this set up. So here's my SSL Fusion. Once it's created, I look at the input. I would go to one and two, because that's how it's set up. All right, here's my West Audio Bus Comp right next to it. Three and four, good to go. Okay, so those are my inputs, so on and so forth for every other piece of hardware gear. I recommend you have it grouped and color coded the way I do, because we're fucking professionals and we organize things like so. Now on the output, this is where this is where it's kind of more of a nuisance. <clears throat> now, when I want to send a signal to a piece of outboard gear, I need to go to that track, whether it's a drum bus track, a kick, snare, vocals. Uh, for this video, I just created a stereo track of a finished beat that I had, and uh, just dropped it in Luna. I want to go to the output of that track. And guess what? Send it to one and two. Wow. All right. Now from one and two, which is our fusion, if I want to make an analog chain, just the output of the SSL fusion into the input of the West Audio bus comp being lines three and four. 
and then from the bus comp I can send it to the main outputs or another like mix master bus that I might have made however you want to do it um, <clears throat> but for now I'm just gonna send it to the main now I could keep doing this for as many outboard tracks that I want right next we need to arm every piece or every track if I don't arm this fusion then I'm only playing, well sorry, that wasn't a, then you're not gonna hear the track playing, right? So I need to arm every track. Okay, cool, we have signal, I can see it in Luna, I can look at the fusion and the bus comp and I see the metering moving, we have signal, we're good to go, it's coming back into the software, nice. Next, when we wanna record, we need to select it from the final track that we're sending the signal to before it goes to the main outputs. So that would be, for this example, the West Audio bus comp. If I were to initiate both of these, both tracks are gonna record. If I initiate just the SSL Fusion um, or engage it, then it's only gonna record the signal that's going into the Fusion and not the entire signal chain, right? So we're gonna select the West Audio bus comp, go up here, hit record. Awesome, we're recording, I can see it, amazing. Okay, so let's disengage that. We don't need this anymore, so we can turn off the, uh, the arm, and then we, for me, I create a new print track, okay? Just a totally separate track that I can drag what I've printed to, so I can have a before and after, um, Whoops, a little lag there. And that's just to stay organized because again, we're professionals, dude. Uh, and then from there, you just make sure that that print track is going to, you're outputting it to wherever. And then just a little tip, always, always, always reset your outputs because I have accidentally sent like a, a vocal and the bass at the same time when I'm trying to print because I forgot to do this. Um, and then I had to go back and print all over again. I just wasted time. So I just always clean as I go, right? That's pretty much it, man. Um, like I said, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's not the most efficient, but you can still make it work. I wish there were hardware inserts like Pro Tools has. I don't know why UA hasn't corrected that yet please figure it out. That'd be awesome. It'd just be so much faster just to set up the IO on the front end and then we can just get in here and work efficiently. This isn't too bad, um, but it is a lot of extra steps. I mean, I'm really not complaining. It works, um, but it can get confusing and I've totally lost track of where my IOs were before during a session um, and just had to go back and, and redo stuff, uh, but it kind of takes away from the flow. Uh, because of the way that this is set up but yeah man uh, I hope this helps like I know I was looking for a solution for this for a while and just do trial and error and googling like this is what I found so uh there you go brother happy mixing dude